Welcome back to another episode of Trading Secrets. Today I am joined by Bachelor Nation fan favorite turned singer-songwriter Carly Waddell. Many of you know Carly from her time on The Bachelor in Bachelor in Paradise not once, but twice. What you may not know is that Carly comes from a long history of singing and songwriting, where she even toured the world as a headliner for the cruise industry before being discovered by producers of The Bachelor franchise. While Carly took a break from music to see through her experience in Bachelor Nation, raising her young kids, and eventually going through a very public divorce, Carly has more recently jumped back into the music world, releasing her first debut EP here in 2023. We are going to listen and learn about life in the music industry, her experiences within reality TV, and how she exemplifies that no matter how old you are or how difficult life moments are going, you can get through it. You can still follow your dreams wherever you want if you have the drive to do so. Carly, thank you so much for being on Trading Secrets. My gosh, that was an incredible intro. It's, you know, the point I'm feeling is, like really good. You feel like, good, a little pat right in the back. Now. We'll just like record that. And if you're having a bad day, just listen and be like, look at what I've done. I'm, yeah. I am crushing the I'm game. I'm doing okay. Yeah, you're yeah. killing it. And I think what's cool is that when I, I did all the research on you, Carly, and I'm thinking about where you are and what you've done and where you are today, but it's all derived from a place that was like exactly what you were doing. I read that, and tell me if it's right, I read that you went to Tish Music at NYU. I did. When I read that, I go, holy shit. Because yeah. Tish is, for anyone that's listening right now, it is it is no joke. It is like the top tier people across the country. And so many people try to get into that school. Yes. You got in. So you knew from day one that music was going to be somewhere in your life. Yeah. So I did musical theater since I was like probably six. Okay. Um, and then in high school, you know, I was like the lead in all the musicals and stuff. So I wanted to do Broadway. That was like my thing. I wanted to be on Broadway. What was um, the best lead when, like, when you go to high school days? Like, God, was the you one know, you well, I was Peter Pan and Peter Pan. That was pretty That's cool. Pretty cool. I got to fly, yeah. but I did have strep throat and like 103 temperature. Ooh. But I got through it. Nice. And I crushed it. Um, but yeah. So then, uh. I knew I wanted to go. I was like, I got to go to New York. So yeah, then I went to uh, Cap 21, which is like a within Tish. But uh, no, it was it was like an, a very rewarding experience, but I only stayed for a year because I just like was not ready for New York City. It's a lot. Yeah, but I love it yeah. now. Yeah. I mean, I've lived the there best. a lot yeah. after that, but right. at that time it was pretty overwhelming. Okay. And that's when you transferred to, is it Oklahoma? Yes. Okay. And you got a degree in musical theater. And I still didn't get a degree. You didn't get, okay. All right. There <laughs> I you. stayed for a year and a half and then I started getting jobs singing and I was like, what am I doing? Like I understudied a Broadway lead actually in Oklahoma, Kelly oh. O'Hara, okay. um, who is like in everything. But um, yeah. And then. I just started getting jobs and I was like, why am I paying to go to school to learn how to sing when I'm already singing Yeah, and people are paying me for it. And then from that, I kind of started cruise ships and all the things. Okay. I want to get into the cruise ships before I do. My brother uh, owns a marketing agency where he works with all the Broadway shows. Mm -hmm. So like they design the logos and all the digital cool. media. And, like, and the, even actually what's interesting is with the Tony awards, how much money uh, producers will spend for marketing when it's Tony season that their show was nominated because apparently it's a very subjective process when they pick the Tony Award mm. winner and how much marketing spend and where your marketing dollars are just saying that you are a Tony nominee. Oh. That's a trading secret is huge. massive. So that's yeah. a, and that's a huge process of actually getting the award, the marketing behind when you're nominated, which is nuts. Yeah. But we went to an off Broadway show. It's called Titanic. And oh, I wanted to see it. It is so good. I Everyone almost should see went it. to that and then I went to Shucked instead. Okay, and Shucked. So he works yeah. on Shucked. Oh, hilarious. Really? Another really good one. But he, when I saw the talent at an off Broadway show, I was talking to him. This was our dinner conversation after. I was like, these people can sing, act, dance at yeah. a level that I've never seen. And so they so still good. haven't made Broadway. I know. So that's how competitive this industry is. Was there ever a point where you're like, even before the cruise ships, you're like, I, it's just too competitive. I can't do it. Yeah, I think, you know, I've struggled with that. I think probably, well, my whole life. Maybe not so much when I was young. When okay. I was young, I would like cut class and go to auditions because I was going to get the part. <laughs> but then I think probably when I went to New York, um, I started being like, oh, I don't know. Like there's so many good people. And yeah. I will say like at... In Cap 21, I 
I was still one of the top people. So Breaks, I wasn't Cat Twenty One. What is this? That's again? the musical theater studio. Okay. Within Tish. Okay. Got um, it. there's like sixty people that are let in per year. Also, I was one of those sixty with Lady Gaga. We were the two people that dropped out. Wait, at the no same way. Time. So you were <laughs> wait you were a, you were like in class with Lady yes. Gaga. Like you yeah. know Lady Gaga. Well, I yes, but then she was Stephanie. Okay, what was Stephanie like in class? I what I was not a fan. <laughs> no way. This is why. Because I mean, she was so talented. But I have a Okay, so like Let it out, Carly. This is okay, some tension here we go. There. Trading secrets. Here we go. Here's a secret. So Stephanie used to during lunch, she would play on the piano. There's a piano, because you would eat just in like a dance studio. Yeah. And um, there was a piano, and she would sit at the piano every single day and just play and sing Wicked at the top of her lungs every day. Okay. And we were all just trying to eat lunch. <laughs> it was like break time. Yeah, it was break time. <laughs> and we were all like forced to listen to her. And yes, was she good? Of course. She yeah. was great. But yeah. I just wanted to eat my sandwich, you know? Interesting. And so I used to just eat in the hallway because she was driving me crazy. She's kind of, if you like compare it to people back home that are like working in an office setting or like maybe we're, I don't know, they're a nurse or a teacher. It's like that person who's just like so extra. Like she's so extra. Always putting in the extra hour, always like, yes. like that's how she Stephanie She would wear these was. really tight leotards and she had really big boobs back then. And, and her boobs are just like coming out. Was she no. noticeably in your? <laughs> so was ridiculous. she like noticeably though, like way better than everybody? Like no, she wasn't like Wayne Gretzky to hockey, LeBron no. to basketball. She wasn't in that group. That person? No, I wouldn't say. I mean, she was, she was one of the good ones, but yeah. I, I wouldn't ever be like she was the so above. Interesting. But now she's what? so above. All right, so then, <laughs> all right. And I'll, I'll get off this in a second. I'm just so intrigued. Why, how do you think someone who was, let's just say, in like the top 10%, because you have to be in the top 10% to be in this group, then go to the maybe the best ever in the world? What do you think she had done between your time in studying with her versus where she is today? Like, how do you make that Gosh, jump? Gosh, I don't know. I mean, she started, you know, doing her own music way before she was doing musical theater stuff. And when she played at the um, like talent show, the NYU talent show, yeah. she was singing her own stuff. And it was, I was like, you can't, I mean, you can't argue that girl's really good. Yeah. And I would, I would definitely say she was better. She was good at everything, but she was better at her own stuff. She okay. was down at the piano, like wailing her own okay. tunes. Now I'm like, God, what was she singing? I yeah, wish I could remember. Right? Or had a video of it or something. <laughs> She's like, ah, no, no, no. <laughs> um, but, uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what she did, but she's a genius. All right. Well, Carly know? is a fan of her music, a fan of her talent, maybe not a fan of I her wasn't, personally. I wasn't her fan of her at that moment. At that moment. You know, yeah. but I was not my best at that moment either. I think sure. we both dropped out of the program because we didn't love the program. And sure. I'm sure she was just as unhappy in it as I was or yeah. she would have stayed. So Have you ever talked to her since? No. Okay. No. All right. No. So, but you, I remember sitting and we both had to like go to the, you know, the president's office or whatever yeah. to like talk about dropping out or whatever. And we were sitting there together and she's like, So what's your deal? And I was like, I just, it's not, it's not a program for me. Yeah. She's like, Yeah, no, me either. Terrible. Interesting. Yeah, I, don't know. I would make it, I would make the bet she knows who you are. Like she remembers you. Cause I, I can remember like kindergarten. I remember yeah. every person. Like yeah. Lady Gaga knows Carly, period. Yeah. And I feel like she's really smart. So why would you? Maybe you should like reconnect with her. Well. Do, you, do your next single. <laughs> My <laughs> next single is with Lady like, Gaga. Yeah, I just go straight not? to the top. Could you imagine? That'd be amazing. All right. Well, that's cool. <laughs> trading secrets oh, man, I didn't yeah. expect to get. But you then find your way and you get recruited by a cruise line to be a headline singer. How does that like, how do you land a cruise line gig in the music industry? Okay. So I was singing at, um, this theater in Savannah called the Savannah Theater. Okay. Um, it's one of the oldest theaters in America that's still up and running. But um, my friend Rachel, who has been my friend since we sang at Six Flags in Texas, um, she was offered a position because she had done cruise ships before. And okay. she said, I can't do it because I'm staying in the show. But I was only in it for six months to cover a pregnant person. So um, she was like, my friend can probably do it. And I just made what they call a reel, which is yeah. just, you know, all clips of you singing. So I did one and um, was hired like the next day. Okay. Trading secrets. We talk career money. Got to ask, what are you paid to sing on a cruise ship? How's that work? 
depends on if you're like a, a singer or a dancer. Okay. Uh, dancers make less money, but there's more of them. Okay. With singers, there's usually four. So there's like the head singer and then the singer dancer. Usually that's how it works. Okay. Two males, two females. Um, so one thing I did learn about negotiating pay yeah. was I was working where I said I was um, understudying someone from Broadway. Yes. I was working a, like a summer stock theater. Mm -hmm. And I remember one of my friends who was a dancer, we talked, we were talking about money and he was like, Oh, I'm paid whatever. I can't even remember what it was. And I was like, wait a second. Yeah. I'm understudying someone. I'm like one of the leads in one show and whatever. And you're getting paid more than me. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. And he was like, well, I just negotiated. And I was like, okay. Mm. And so I was like, got it. So then when I went to the Savannah theater, I negotiated for more money. And then on cruise ships, I was asking my friend, like, what did you make? And I was like, no, I'm not making that. Yeah. I'll ask for more. Yeah. So then every cruise ship, I just kind of kept asking for more. By the last cruise ship, I was making 5000 a month. Okay. But I also was, you know, in my early 20s and I had no. No expenses. No right? expenses at all. Okay. So you make 5000 a month. How many shows do you have to do? Depends on ship. the ship, okay. but my two of the ships we had three shows each. Okay. Um, but usually you only end up doing two of those shows. Sometimes okay. they'll throw in like a show that you haven't done in months, and yeah. you're like, "What? Well, I don't even remember this show." Right. And then room, pay, food, all that. Same Everything's care of. okay. Yeah. Taken so that care was of. like at the end of your cruise ship experience, around five k. The low end what was it like two, two and a half? Like Pro I think maybe I probably started at like. 3,500 or something. Okay. And then by the end, okay. I was just negotiating more. But also like with those things, I also would never take like, I need my space. And so yeah. like dancers have to share a room. Yeah. And I was like, no, I'll never take a contract where I have to share a room. I okay. just know myself. Okay. Would you, if someone's thinking about this, they see it, they hear it, they're looking for a change. They have the ability. Would you recommend? Oh yeah. So you, you would fully endorse that career? Yes. Okay. I mean, I left at the perfect time when I needed to leave for like just my sanity, yeah. my mental health. But you can see the world for free, like, yeah. and, and sing and meet people and hang and just, it's, it's fantastic. Interesting. Okay, another thing I didn't know about you, Carly, I learned so much prepping oh, wow. about you, is that your brother was also on The yes. Bachelor. So he yeah. was on Bachelorette, I thought it was season nine or something? He was on Desiree season. Desiree season. Yes. Is that how the show found you? Yes. So I was, it was actually my last cruise ship. Um, my brother, my brother's so ridiculous. He's yeah. like my best friend, but we used to, at that time it was Skype. Everybody Skyped each other to see each other. And one day he called me on the ship and he's like, I need to Skype with you. And he was, um, he was like, Hey, I heard about this audition for this show called the bachelor. And I think I'm going to do it. And I was like, you should do it. <laughs> And he was like, what do I do? And I was like, I don't know, just be yourself. Yeah. And so my brother is just such a ham. So he walks in with a crab costume on. Okay. And he starts singing Under the Sea. And he like does it very well. Is he a, so he's a singer well, too? Well, he's like a, I mean, yes, but no. He's okay. never done it professionally. Yeah. Um, but he's just such a ham. And so anyway, he got on the season and then uh, started filming when I was on the ship. Okay. And so... I got home like four days or something before hometown dates. Okay. And so I had not seen him in like almost a year. Like it had Did been like nine months. Dates? Mm -hmm. And then he got wow. kicked off when they met us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we ruined it for so him. So that was your first exposure to the show. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, you know, they asked my mom to like talk to this girl. And yeah. she's like, I can't do it. I'm too nervous. Because I guess this girl was like, I think Zach and I are just friends. And like, mm -hmm. we don't know if we can break through the friend zone. And I was like, I'll talk to her about it. I don't care. Yeah. Be like, what? <laughs> You're making the wrong choice. If you just want him as a friend. Producers were like, that's a girl. <laughs> and then there they were. We they were like, we like her. And so then they asked me to do the next season. They were actually choosing between like, you know, a couple of people. Sure. And it, my brother was like in the running. So okay. I went to like, you know, the final casting or whatever. And they're like, would you date your brother? And I was like, no. <laughs> And then they were like, would you be like a, like wear a fake nose or something yeah. and walk around and like be with the girls? And I was like, yeah, maybe. Um, but then it ended up being Juan Pablo. And okay. Juan Pablo is my brother's best friend from the show. But like Juan Pablo uh, and I do not get along. Okay. We are 
no, no, no. And okay. so I was like, I'm not doing what, it. What did something happen? No, we just like you just don't like his. Vibe. I don't like his vibe. Does he know you don't like his vibe? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, but and and he just always has an opinion about the things that I do, and I'm like, I'm not your little sister. Don't okay. tell me what to do. Anyway, <laughs> um, so I was like, no, I'm not doing that. And they said, and my brother was mad. He was like, you should do it. You're never gonna get an opportunity again. I was like, watch me. And then they were like, if you ever want to come back on and you see a bachelor that you like or whatever, let us know. And so Crystal's was on Good Morning America. And I was like, That's I have guy. to get on the I have to get on the show. <laughs> and they were like, all right. All right. So that's so that's how they found you. You get on the show. At this time, are you working at the cruise line? I was done with the cruise ships. Okay. Honestly, I left cruise ships. And I do feel like this is almost like a manifesting thing, sort yeah. of, because I left cruise ships because I was like, I want a life. I want a family. Sure. I want a husband. Like, I want to find someone and I'm not going to have that life if I choose to do this. There's so many people who sing on cruise ships that are just Lifers. old and yeah. alone. Yeah. And I was like, I don't want to be old and alone. Like, right. I want to have a family. Yeah. And so I left for that. So when The Bachelor came into my life, it really was like the thing that I wanted, yeah. you know, and social media was not around then. Right. I was doing it because I wanted to fall in love. So the intention of going on that show, well, the, the whole idea of like getting a fame and potentially career boost from being on The Bachelor has been around since 2000. But the idea of getting a social media platform, that wasn't a discussion during mm, your sh- no. during when you were on the show. It honestly was like something that was just starting sort of when my brother was on the show. Yeah. But then when we went on, I remember afterwards being like, what is that? What is happening? Because yeah. we had to turn off our Instagram. Like my Instagram yeah. is Carly Wad. Now it used to be Carly Waddell, but they made us turn it off. Turn it yeah. off. And then I could never even get my name back. Isn't that interesting? And now they're doing collabs with like GMA and stuff. It's crazy. So, so like we're before we weren't even allowed to like say we were ever associated with the show. Yeah. They would never tag us or anything. I know. Now you got like Good Morning America doing collabs, trying to promote everyone's Instagram. So it's, it's so changed bizarre. dramatically. I know. It's very right. strange. So you end up going on the show. One thing I got to ask you about Money Mafia, that's the listening crew. They send in tons of questions. Okay. Some of the questions are like very specific. Like, I want to know the alimony. Did she negotiate prenup? They're like very business and technical. Some of them are just like gossipy. And I'm like, I try to stay away from those. But one thing I want to <laughs> at least ask you about, because <laughs> okay. you mentioned Juan Pablo, and this is a easy, oh. I'm not going to get into it because I don't know much about it. But people were asking, actually, I'm going to give him a shout out. You know, Zachary Reality. Zachary Reality's on yes, TikTok. Yeah, yeah, he's like, yeah, 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 he's yeah. like the new reality guy. Anything yes. comes out, he's on it. He yeah. sent the question in oh, God. about, he wanted to know the status of you and Brit and you guys had some oh, my feuds. God. Like, is that a thing? Yes, but oh God, that was so long ago. It's funny to even talk about. Um, is it like even a thing in 2023? No! Yeah, and I, all I know about Brit is that her and Caitlin were competing to be the Bachelor. No. I don't know anything else. You know, here's the thing. I just... There was so much behind the scenes that no one else sees. Of course. That was yeah. just, it was just a pack of lies, you know? And then yeah. she would pre- present herself as so different. And I just, that's like my biggest pet peeve in life is mm. when people aren't authentic. Mm. It just drives me crazy. That so there was part of me that crazy. I didn't, you know, explain things very nicely and I made fun of her and, but it was coming from a place of being so frustrated yeah. that I was watching this person just be so not authentic. It is that you is know? what triggers me. <laughs> it just drives me When crazy. things happen behind closed but doors no, it's and not the public thing they're different anymore. and then you're mislabeled or things like that. Yes. It's like... Yeah, it's I become silliness. very deregulated, so I I can connect with that. All right, there you go, Zach. Reality, you got your shout out. Brit drama with Carly dead. Let's get back to business. <laughs> you get off the show. We know you go on Paradise twice, so we're gonna get uh, yeah. into Paradise. I want to hear about the podcast and, of course, your music. But before we do that, within the period between the Bachelor ending and then Paradise, yes. was there any way for you to monetize, make money, drive any type of career movement? from being on the show at that time? Yes, a little bit. I started working with, and honestly, he was such a slime ball. I can't even remember his name. Some guy who was a slime ball. And, like um, an agent, are you saying? Yes. Okay. Um, and he, not who I'm with now, he um, got me a few things, like a few advertisements on Instagram okay. right when I moved to Nashville. Um, How many followers did you have at this time? I have no idea. Okay. I don't know. Maybe less than 100,000 if you had to guess? Maybe. Okay. I I really honestly have no idea. Okay. So you get a few <laughs> you get a few Instagram ads. If you had to guesstimate how much you made off Instagram in this time before going back on Paradise, give me an Jeez. approximation. 
I don't, I think every ad was probably f- maybe three to $500. Okay. So things have obviously changed dramatically. They since have then. changed since um, then. Yes. The guy that the agent you said that was a scumbag. Yeah. Why was he, a, what made him Because he wouldn't send me money afterwards. He didn't pay you. Right. So you do the deal. You he paid me deal, for some of them. And you're not, you didn't get paid. And then, yeah. And then I was like, I'm missing so much money. And he was like, no, you're not. And I sent all the stats yeah. back and and then i was just like never mind we're not working together anymore wow yeah interesting is that person still in the business i have no idea i hope not okay so you go on paradise first time you go on paradise was there any hesitation you already talked about negotiating i ask anyone that's been on paradise did you negotiate at all <clears throat> no i didn't negotiate i was just kind of i was you know my best friend was jade so jade was like i don't know if i want to do it and i was like let's just do it and have fun whatever yeah and so she was more trying to figure out if she wanted to go or not but i was like who cares let's just go have fun like it really truly doesn't matter let's just go to the beach yeah. and hang out with each other yeah that's as much thought it, as with i some gave ABC it cameras around yeah you know, just give it a shot well and i was like what are we doing right now we had moved to nashville and then we're like well i don't know what do we do now the first time you go on <laughs> was that when jade and tanner were together Yes. Okay. That's but, when they got together. And it for you, the first time on Paradise didn't work out relationship wise. <laughs> no, I met a guy at the first day and we yeah. were with each other like till basically the last day. Um, and then, yeah, well, not the last day, like three days before the last day. And okay. He just broke, just my broke heart. up right before. He was I like, know. I was like, what, you coming over to break up with me? And then he was like, he did. Sure am. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny now. It's wasn't funny, funny now. then. Wasn't it looked funny then. so crazy. I'll tell you what, time heals. <laughs> Let's talk about this. Um, so we just had Michael A on. He yes. came out this past week. He told us that he negotiated a thirty-five thousand dollars guarantee. So whether he left no, day I one or day two, we've also had people like Wells on who said he was given four hundred dollars a day, and even when he started hosting as the bartender, he still was making four hundred dollars a day. What was it pay like back then? Around two, three hundred bucks a day. I think it was. Bucks? I think it was three or four hundred dollars. Okay, a day. so pretty consistent with yes. that. Yes. Then you made it the whole time. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, so you go on Bachelor. You go on Bachelor in Paradise. You get off Bachelor in Paradise. Your heart's broken. So you broken. have another full year until you touch reality mm-hmm. TV again. Mm-hmm. In that full year, from a career standpoint, what's going through Carly's head? What worked? What didn't work? What did income look like? Gosh, I mean. After after Bachelor in Paradise, I mean, income was, I started working with a different agent, social media agent, um, and income was, I mean, way better, like, okay. you know, thousands of dollars an ad or $1,000 as opposed to $300 or sure. something like that. Um, and just, um, you know, even going to different, uh, I think Jade and I did some like, casino things and appearances and things like that that would generate income where I could hang out with my friends and make money, money. you know, not just like Instagram stuff. Things like, so what year was this? 2000? I have no idea. Let's say it's 2000. All right. So the the year was like for you and Jade to go to a club, I'm going to, I'm going to guess like you're at a casino, you're doing an appearance, meet and greet. I'm going to guess that you guys made back then three grand each. I bet it was something Does like that. Does that sound right? That sounds probably right. Okay. Yeah. And in that year, if you had to guess, I'm going to guess. You tell me if I'm close. Before going on Paradise again, 150 grand off social media? Oh, yeah. 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 More or less? Probably that. Okay. Right. Yeah. So at this time, you're full on influencing career-wise. Yes. Okay. Where are you living? Nashville. At any point before going back on Paradise, are you starting to flirt or think about the music scene again? You know... It was weird. Okay, so I've always wanted to live in Nashville because I always wanted to be a singer. Since okay. I was like a little, I had books that were like how to make in the music business. Yeah. And I was like, it has to be in Nashville. Yeah. But then when I moved, it was, you know, I was going out a lot and yeah. meeting a lot of people and there was music everywhere. But I was so, I was making so much money doing this other thing that it was like almost, social media was almost like, and the bachelor world was just such a distraction from anything else. Yeah. Uh, so music was there and I would like, you know, go sing karaoke and do yeah. some stuff. Um, 
And I'd still be like writing songs. Like I never have stopped doing that, but um, not really. After, well, that's not true. Actually, now that I think about it. After the guy broke my heart on Bachelor in Paradise, I did write a song and so ghettoly, like made the music on GarageBand myself. I don't oh, even yeah. think it was like in the right key. Yeah. And sang it and then put it online. Okay. And then I remember when they were they were interviewing me, Chris Harrison was like, oh, and you wrote it like a breakup song. Mm -hmm. I was like, yes. <laughs> um, so I was still doing it, but okay. not not in the way of like being in Nashville and getting on stage and singing. I was like releasing things online. Okay. Did you think reality TV was done at this point or did you have a pretty good idea that oh, Paradise I thought it was, was coming done. around? No, I thought it was So how did done. they get you back to go in and why did you end up going back to Paradise round two? You know, I was like really mad at the show, honestly. I mean, I think- for, for what reason? Because I thought how many people like- Okay, so when this guy broke up with me, it was like a big deal on the show and okay. nobody saw it coming, uh, but did they see it coming? Got it. And I was just in the dark for TV. I, and I just was like, I can't do that again mm -hmm. because I don't know what was real. Okay. I, that's what I felt like. I felt like, I felt like there was a show going on and everyone yeah. knew and I didn't know. And I felt like a fool. Like blindsided completely. That was my name of my song was blindsided. Wow. Um, it's down now. It was so bad. But uh, anyway. <laughs> I was going to say uh, go download it. No, maybe not. <laughs> don't. don't. <laughs> it's it's gone. Download. Please don't try to find it. <laughs> um, but anyway, I no, I was like absolutely not. I started like sort of dating, but like not. Um, yeah, no, I didn't want to go. Did back. you date it before going on Paradise Round Two? Did you date anybody from the franchise? No. Okay. No, I have never dated anyone from the franchise. Okay. Well, you have. Well, You've actually well, married well, But like, that's the only person. <laughs> got it. Oh, right. I got you. Yeah. Okay. No. All right. So I've also, I've never been the girl that guys have like gone after. So like, got like bachelor people slipping in people's DMs. That yeah. is like. Not that hasn't happened to me. Huh. Well, have you <laughs> slipped into anybody else's? No, <laughs> it's just not your style. No, you just like go to the bar. There's karaoke. Maybe I'll meet my future husband. You and know, I'll be there were there would be worse ways. Yeah, you know? okay, that's fair. I like yeah. that. All right, so they end up convincing you to go on somehow. Somehow, they did. Did you use this negotiating power you've already talked about to get no, paid more? I didn't. So did you get you got paid the same that you did the year before? Yeah, four hundred bucks a day. But again, I was kind of just like. I did not think I would meet anyone. I just was truly like, I'm just going to go because it's something to do right now. And you had the new guys come through. There's a new season. You didn't have your eye on anyone. No. Okay. And then you come off the show and you got engaged on the show. I did. No idea that was coming. No. None he actually whatsoever. did. Um, well, that's not true. So, well, I did not think I would get engaged, but... He told me on our date that he wouldn't propose to me because he wanted his kids to be involved okay. with me before yeah. he ever did that. Yeah. But then Amanda Stanton told me he is going to propose. And I so I was walking down to the beach really, truly not knowing what the fuck was going on. Wow. Okay, so you come off paradise, not even expecting to go in reality TV, you then walk out with a ring and a fiancé. Yeah. <laughs> You're that shaking was, your head. Well, All right. Let yeah. me, can I ask about this? Because we talk mm -hmm. about career, things like that. The ring. My understanding with the ring is, is if you're engaged for two years, you get to keep the ring. And contractually, no matter what, it's your ring. Uh, Yeah, I actually did not like the ring oh, that I was okay. presented. <laughs> did you get to do a switcheroo? I did, but it was still under the same like amount of money that the ring they had purchased I it had, for. You, you can't tee me up like that. I'm not sure what that amount was because I wasn't told. What do you think the ring was valued at? Well, it, it, what, I don't... Okay, so we, <laughs> we went to pick out our wedding bands at Neil Lane on Rodeo Drive. Okay. So I think everything in there is probably priced a little more because it's on Rodeo Drive. That's bit. what I'm thinking. Okay. Because like if you took this ring and to like to Kay's market. Jewelers yeah. where he does have a line, it would look a lot Interesting. like what's in that line. But okay. I don't know if the diamond is different. I don't okay. know anything about that. Mm. But I do know that I, I finally was like, Evan, 
I don't like this. Yeah. And he was like a little bit offended. And then he was like, okay, let's see if we can change it. So then we went into the, to Neil Lane and he was like, could Carly change the ring? And he was like, I'll pay more for it, which, um, this ring I think cost like a couple thousand dollars more. And he was like, you can just have it, have which it. was really nice. Okay. Got but it. yes, I do have that ring. Okay. And the you, new version. The retail version though, you're, if you had to guess 75 grand. No, I think it was like in the twenties. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Surprised that. Okay. So retail around 2025 and then yeah, contractually you get to keep it. It's your ring. Yes. If you're engaged for two years is my understanding. Yeah. And we were married. We got divorced the yeah. day before our fifth year anniversary. Okay. Got it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Please don't be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So you get off the show, you're engaged. So now it's a whole different world. Social yeah. media is moving in a different world. Yes. And now you're in this Bachelor Nation relationship. Talk to me about career moves from there. What were you thinking? Was there a plan? When did you notice? Like, I've never shit, it's had changed. a plan. It's I'm 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 always on the no plan plan. Okay. Which isn't a good plan. I was gonna say, but it's worked out for you. Yeah, but it yes. But it's always like, ooh, like it's, I don't know. Okay. It's always a little bit, money makes me nervous. For what Because reason? I've had a lot and I've had a little and I've had the middle and it's never been a constant thing, okay. you know? Huh. It's never been something I've been great at. Has I'm it, really good at spending money. The, the, the typical, like if you look at that chronological breakdown of what you said, I've had a little, I've had some, and I've had a lot. Typically as people are aging, right? And they're working more. Mm -hmm. The natural progression is I've had a little, I've had a, a decent amount and I've had a lot. Was that the same road for you? I mean, I made the most money right after Evan and I got engaged. So that was your best year income wise. The best year income rise was the year we got married on paradise. Okay. Which was the following summer then? Yes. Okay. But I mean, that's when everything, you know, followers skyrocketed. Okay. Gotcha. So you do yeah. that full year, you're influencing. Now we already know, like we guesstimate around 150,000. If you're guesstimating, like double that. Oh yeah, for maybe sure. Even, maybe even maybe more. Maybe even triple that. Yeah. Wow. So you're crushing it now. Yeah. Okay. So you're moving full speed. You both live in Nashville. You're engaged. There's only been one wedding, I think, on Paradise with um, Crystal and... Um, Chris. Thank you. And mm -hmm. Chris. I should know, Chris was on our season than since your wedding. So it seems mm. like they've like kind of gone away with weddings, but it felt like <laughs> your wedding. Well, they're working out really well. Yeah, yeah we can both speak to that one. <laughs> Success uh, rate, eh, not uh, so much. Hopefully, Joey's the new bachelor. I'm, it's going to work out for him. I have a feeling. All right, for the wedding though, how does that work? I remember Caitlin telling me a little bit about it. I know she was there. And yes. they brought some heavy hitters back for your wedding. And I feel yes. like when it was on Paradise... It was massive. I wasn't in the whole Bachelor world then, but I even remember hearing everything about that wedding then. Tell me a little bit about that. When they approached you, did you guys negotiate? Was there hesitation? Okay, so Evan was like really wanting to get married on TV. Okay. And I just, I wasn't thinking about that. Like I, did, not that I didn't, but that wasn't like something I was looking to do. Were you against it? Not against it. I just was like, we were already having kind of, like we came back from paradise and there was a lot going on in our relationship. So yeah. I kind of was like, is this the right thing to do already? And it's just so public and I don't know. Um, so he, I think was like, we should, I think he asked them, I want to get married on the show. How oh, can we do that? I always feel like they would approach, but I know, okay. I think he did it. And then they were like, great idea. Okay. And then they kind of said, where do you want to get married? And, and started talking to me about wedding details. I was like, I don't know. So I really wanted to get married in Napa. Um, and so they were like, go look at places in Napa. So okay. I was going to look at places with Jade and Julia. And then, um, and then they kind of said, I think we're just going to do it um, in the Vedanta in Paradise, Paradise. area. Yeah. And I was like, okay. So then that kind of changed. Um, but then it also, the wedding was also that same year that Paradise got shut down for that like 
scandal. Oh, so our wedding almost did not happen almost at got all. Almost canceled because of that. Yes. So we didn't even like two weeks before our wedding, we didn't even know if it was going to happen. Wow. Which I, I was like, what? But again, there was a lot going on. Even then, that was so, there was just drama happening uh, with stuff. With so you, In your personal life. Yes. And so I was kind of like, if we didn't do it right now, it would make a lot of things really easy. So while paradise almost got shut down a week or two before your wedding, I think what I'm hearing is a week or two before your wedding, you were I wasn't okay thinking I wasn't thinking about not marrying Evan. I still was going to do that. Was I just TV? was like, yeah, I just was a, there was a it was a lot. Yeah. There, it was it just a lot. lot. A wedding's a yeah. lot in itself and then on TV and then paradise and everything. I mean, it's a lot. Yes. Okay. But also what I didn't know was I was pregnant. So everything was a lot. I found out I was pregnant 3 days after we were married. Wow. So during that taping you were pregnant. Yeah. Oh, interesting. So there was just like it was there's a lot. To There's a lot at happening at that same time. Friends and family, can they come to those weddings? Yes, but you know what's interesting about that is, there's like, okay, there's a limit of people you can invite. Yeah. So you know, I have a huge family. Of course, yeah. If you invite one extra person, you have to invite that whole side. Sure. You know, so I kept it super small. Okay. I invited like obviously like my brothers, my mom and dad. Cool. Actually, one of my brothers couldn't come, um, but I didn't go to his wedding because. It was filmed while I was in paradise. It's terrible. It's terrible. We still, he's still my best friend. The guy from The Bachelor. Yeah. <laughs> Bachelorette. Um, but anyway, um, yeah. And I, I invited like two of my cousins and my aunt and uncle and my grandma. Okay. And so for the wedding, they obviously pay for the whole wedding. Do you get paid to be? Like, yes. Do you get paid to go to your wedding? We got paid to go to our wedding and our wedding was paid for. That's pretty good. I didn't get to keep my dress, which was kind of sad. Did you negotiate it? No. Like, you, did you negotiate your payment? No. Interesting. Mm -mm. Okay. Can I take a guess on how much they paid you? Sure. You can tell me, either you can tell me the amount or you can tell me on hot, warm, or cold. Okay. I'm going to say you guys got a talent fee of um, 10000 each. More. I was going to say fifteen each. More. We got 25 each. That's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I think that's great. Yeah. Okay. So here Carly is saying a couple of years ago, I'm not going on paradise. You go right. on paradise, you get engaged, you get the ring. You have the best, one of the best years you ever have. Then you get married, mm -hmm. you get paid to go on. Mm -hmm. Things at this point, I mean, momentum is at your back. You have now been on the show, Bachelor, Bachelor in Paradise, Bachelor in Paradise, got married. So you're four uh -huh. years, this whole 15 minutes of fame thing, out the fucking door. Mm -hmm. You're on your fourth year, probably career, professional, and financial-wise, doing your absolute best. Yes. Okay. When you just get married, w at what point do you start the podcast with Jade? Was that before or after mm. that? It was after that. Okay. Like, so we had the that. podcast one year with her best friend Liz, and then three years by ourselves, yeah. I believe. Okay, got it. So that was so that extends things another three, four years. I went on that podcast. It was a great podcast. You guys, from a business perspective, built a massive, massive community yes. with, with moms and, and mm -hmm. married individuals talking about trials, tribulations, relationships, and parenting and all of these mm -hmm. things. Um, how did that podcast do? Did it perform well? Did you guys monetize well off it? It did well at the beginning. I okay. mean, I think. Um, and then it was hard because Jade and I both aren't like people that love to reach out to people and ask to be for a favor. Yeah. And so if one of us was like that, I think it would have done better. But I feel I just I don't, I'm not a good I don't ask for favors in life. Yeah. I kind of just do it all myself. Huh. Um. So I just, I think that was probably one of the issues we had. Okay. Um, and then it was, we were both so in kid mode yeah. that it was really hard to even like just put time and energy into it outside of filming. Okay. Or, you know, not filming. Yeah, but just yeah, showing recording. up and recording. And yeah. Because... Behind the scenes of podcasting, there's so many moving parts, right? Right. The clips, the pre-producing, the questions, the talent. The, the, what does the talent align with the timing? Like there's so right. much shit that goes, the editing, all yes. of it. Yes. It's a lot. 
So yeah. for you guys, it just, it was doing, you guys were doing well with it in the beginning though, making yeah. a couple bucks. Yeah, 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 of course. And then it got to a point where you're just like, the juice wasn't worth the squeeze. Yes. Okay. Completely. But also I will say like we were signed with um, Westwood One and they started taking on, they hadn't done podcasts before. So we yeah. were one of the first yeah. uh, with them and they started taking on so many podcasts that, yeah. you know, I just think they didn't know there was just too many hands to feed, you yeah. know, and they couldn't feed us the way we needed to be fed. To be fed. But, but now that they're with Podcast One, who then blew up and then sold, now they're publicly traded like... It's crazy what's it's happening. Crazy. Right yeah. Is there any bit of podcasting that you want to get? Do you have a desire to get back into the space? You know, so we were like let go from Westwood One. Okay. And then they actually asked me back to do something else. And it was um, in that time, there was a girl who's actually a radio uh, host here. And we were thinking about doing something. We, you know, and then I was just like, you know, I'd rather, she does a lot of interviews of, country music artist. And I, it was in that time that I was like, I want to be the one being interviewed. Yeah. Like, I don't want to be the person interviewing That's Carrie Underwood. Great question. That's a yeah. great, great thought. So great to me, thought. I was like, that's not the route, you know, like it just seemed like the opposite of what I would truly, my dream was, Yeah, you know, when last question on the podcast, when you guys wrapped it up, was there any, was it mutual between you and Jade? Was there any bit of like contention there? Or was it just like, no, this didn't work out. Like we love each other. Life is good. We'll move yeah. yeah. Well, and it wasn't our choice. You know what I mean? Good point. So yeah. it was just kind of one of those things. It's like we talked about doing something independently. And I was like, Jade, when do we have time to do that? Yeah. Like what? Yeah. You going to edit it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> I'm because I'm not. Yeah. And you going to get the guests because yeah. I don't want to like that. That was their job. And like yeah. it was just there was too much. And honestly, I was, I couldn't talk about being a mom anymore for yeah, a while. I was like, burnt out from it. I yeah. can't, like, I'm more than a mom. Yeah. And like, I love my kids, yeah. but like, I got to do something else. You I know? love it. I, I think good for you guys, career direction. You've made a ton of pivots career wise. Yes. We're going to get into the music. One thing I have to ask you about, I just wrote a book. It comes out in April. It's called Talk Money to Me. And it's eight questions that you need to know about yourself when it comes to your financials and eight questions you need to know about your partner. Mm. And the whole idea is like moving and working as one and finding a customized solution that works best for both of you, even if there's different income levels and there's different time deployed and value add. Yeah. So it's like getting on the same page as one because it's a number two reason yeah. the relationships don't totally. work out. When it came to, that's a tough position when you get married on a TV show, you get engaged on a TV show and then you're out in this crazy world did you and Evan have any type of financial, I guess, like discussions about processes or even recommendations that worked for you that people back home could listen to or recommendations that you wish you would have done differently just as managing finances as one? We didn't manage finances finances as one. I never knew how much it was in his bank account and he never knew how much mine. It was in mine. Interesting. So we kept that very very separate knowing what you know now do you think that had like the money aspect of things had led to any type of issues not knowing or, or do you think um i think in the divorce yes in but <laughs> um like uh no because i just happily paid and he would happily pay and you know we just, just took turns and yeah yeah and you know like he would pay the rent and i would pay yeah. all the bills and he would you know what i mean like we took our things and did them but okay. Um, yeah, no, we had a marriage attorney out of LA come on and what her perspective was on prenups was you don't have to sign them, but they already exist. I was mm -hmm. like, what do you mean they already exist? She said, every person that gets married is a prenup. I said, that's not true. She said, it is true. Every state has their own set of rules once you get married and every state's rules are different. Mm. Those state rules are your prenup. And then oh, you have okay. the choice yeah, if you yeah, want yeah, to yeah. adjust those state rules with the with the United States rules to customize it to your situation. So yeah. I was like, that's an interesting perspective that I never heard of. Was there ever a discussion of a prenup and knowing what you know now about divorce for anyone back mm -hmm. home that hasn't got married? Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice or an opinion on that? You know, it's interesting. Evan actually asked me for a prenup before we got married. And I told him, I'm not doing that yeah. because I would never take anything from you. Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't take any, I mean, he pays me child support, but yeah. I didn't take in a dime from him. Yeah. Um, otherwise. 
Um, nor he didn't take any of my money either. Um, so, uh, I understand why they exist, Mm -hmm. um, completely, but I do also understand what you're saying. The laws are the laws, (laughs) Yeah, yeah, you know, but you also, you know, we used a mediator so you also can make choices. That is a really good point. That's yeah. something we've never talked about. Is can you can you talk about like what a little bit of a mediator does for anyone out there that's like, wait, what? That's an yeah, option. Yeah. So a mediator is an option if you know there wasn't Evan and I didn't work and there wasn't bad blood, you know. So um a mediator was chosen because we didn't need lawyers to fight over a home. We didn't need mm, lawyers yeah. to fight over money. We, you know, we wanted to keep it as peaceful as possible. I owned my home. He wasn't trying to take it. We both, you know, still didn't know how much was in each other's bank <laughs> accounts. So we weren't trying to take it. And yeah. so it was just an easier way than having lawyers come in and tell you, Hey, you can get something from him or you yeah. can do this. And just having a bunch of chatty people in your ear, running the bill ca- up, every, running every, the bill every up. Minute, every phone so, call. Yeah. yeah. So it was just cheaper because we could just sit in there and say, here's this, here's that. I will say at the end, I did get a lawyer for some of the ending, you know, bow tie on the top. But um, yeah, a mediator is an option just to, it just costs less. And so you pay a mediator, is it per hour or for the project? project? Well, you pay, I think, you pay, you know, up front. I think okay. we paid like twenty five hundred dollars just okay. to use her. Yeah. And then um yeah, like per hour. And the purpose of a mediator is to like to do exactly what the title is. Like let's compromise yes. and do what makes sense. Yes. For for you, for you, yes, and for all of us. Here, right. And right? with kids being involved, you know, it's that's to me where the finances and stuff, we didn't that wasn't like not the big deal. It was yeah. more like how often are we going to see our children? Time. And so that was where I was like, oof, I can't compromise on that. Sure. So I was like, I need them most of the time. Yeah. And I'm not compromising on that. Um, what she was very willing to give me the time that yeah. we have. But um, yeah, I will say that was that one with a mediator. To me, I was like a little bit more scared about. Yeah. I th- and it ended up working out with a yes. mediator, right? Yeah, so yeah. I think that's a, a training seat we've never had on this podcast, and I think it's a good one. And I think maybe it's even agreement some couple should have before they even enter into marriage and say, hey, if things don't work out, one of the routes we're going to decide to go right now is mediation. Like yeah. we will get a mediator as opposed to letting even two high price attorneys just yeah. try and kill us. Just start there. Yeah. I would say. There. I think that's a great, great trading seat. Yeah. Let's transition into being a single parent. I think there are a lot of single parents that listen to this podcast. Mm-hmm. Any advice from either a financial perspective or even Ugh, managing so a career expensive. as a single parent? Like any thoughts or ideas I mean, or strategies for people out honestly, there? Honestly, just you need a lot of help. Like okay. you can't I mean I I do it alone. Like we sleep there together and whatever. But I mean, I had a nanny for three years just to help me until the kids were like school age because I still needed to do all my content. I needed to record my podcast. I needed to do all these things. And then when the nanny wasn't there, sometimes I needed to call my mom to come over because like even today, um, my son's in school Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, but like uh, Tuesday and no, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but Tuesday and Thursday, I don't have help. So yeah. obviously like we're recording a podcast. I have things to do some of these days. So I had to, you know, call in the mom. Sure, sure. Um, but I will say too, that, you know, I was, I will never forget like the first night being in my house as a single parent alone, giving baths, putting the kids to bed, being so overwhelmed and thinking like, how am I ever going to do this? Mm-hmm. Like, this is a lot, and I did not sign up for this life. Yeah. But now, like, every day is just a day. You know, it's like, yes, you have it challenges. They're children. But, like, it's not, it's not that anymore. It's yeah. like, it's not easy, but it's, like, become just, it's become its own version of s- sort of easy. Yeah. It's, it's almost like survival instincts, whether it's money, career, or being a parent, it feels like what I'm hearing at least is that when you're backed up against a wall and you feel like you're stuck and there's nowhere to go, 
mm-hmm. you find a way to do it. And you when do. You f- your survival instincts get tapped to a level they never have. And yeah. now it feels like these aren't, this is my interpretation. So tell me if I'm right, right or wrong. But now that you have it down, it's like, okay, I can do that. I can do anything. Yeah. I, could, I have found the time. I understand totally. how to do this. My career, my personal life, my dating life, all these things are going to work out now. Right. Or you like just, you have to pivot in some other way. Yeah. Okay. You pivoted. You pivoted yeah. in a big way. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You pivoted in a big way into music. Yeah. Always been a big part of your life. It is now the, you go to Carly's page, you are going to see Carly singer. We right. posted the uh, reel yesterday of you singing. You have an EP out. So an EP from my understanding, it's not a single but it's not a full record. Right. So it's somewhere in between. Yes. You released two songs. How has the business, let's just start with this. Was there any hesitation to get back into the music space? No. Um, I have released four, by the way. Okay, but, correction. Let's, you've uh, released four. I have two more to release. Two more to release. But they're, yeah, they're not finished yet. Okay. I mean, they're finished, but they're not mastered yet. Okay. Um, but um, right after... I was asked for a divorce. Um, I remember having a conversation with my social media agent and he was like, you just need to do something that makes you happy. Like what makes you happy? And so I was like, singing makes me happy. And so he's like, do it. And so he found these people that I worked with to put everything together and wrote with and produced. And, um, and I think right when I started writing with them, I knew this is exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. And like, I usually like my gut doesn't, well, sometimes it does, but I feel like <laughs> lately in the past couple of years, my gut hasn't really steered me very wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it felt so good to be doing that again, that even though I was spending lots of money on it, I was like, this still feels like what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up though. Cause I was listening to your song, your friends like me on the way here. Love that song. By Thank the way, you. I was like, this is landing. This is great. <laughs> uh, but I, I thought about it. I was like, how do you like, do you have to pay to make it? Like if I wanted to make a song, oh, which yeah. I'm not capable of, but if I did, you have to pay, like, you have to pay a writer. You have to do all these things right out of pocket. Yeah. So, I mean, I hired, writers and like one of the writers, his name's Curtis Douglas. Um, but he's also like a producer and he mixes all this music and he's, he's skyrocketed since I met him. He's incredible, just a genius. But, um, I, I basically like bought a package of three songs, including me writing with two writers and the song from basically start to finish recorded, mixed, and then I would have to get it mastered. Okay. But um, so it was like a three song package, but each song cost a lot. Yeah. Like, let me guess. Okay. <laughs> each song to make a song, I'm going to say 7,500 bucks. Well, less actually. Uh, like 7,500 is a lot of freaking money. Yeah. Three, less. Four grand. It was five grand per song. From start to finish. Okay. Writing included. And so you buy a package of three. So then yes. you're spending 15K K cash yes. out the door. I love right. talking about this stuff because it's things that people do not know about the music industry. Yeah. The other thing that they don't but know is how other hard people it is might re- be doing it way differently. Way differently. Yeah. Right? But this was your strategy. Right. And to recoup that though in this space, it's like next to impossible, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, because how? When That's you why I'm like, why did I just spend all this money on music, you crazy lunatic? <laughs> but let me also counter this: for your brand as a whole, yes. it's got to be huge. I mean, we have Zach Tepperman here, Zach Tepperman, PR, ZTPR, beauty in Nashville. <laughs> like, I mean, just having uh, you know Zach behind what you're doing and how you're doing it, and then seeing what you're doing, it has to allow for other revenue sources that aren't connected to actually mu- money coming in from music directly. Yes. Yes, for sure. Okay, Zach, that's your job right there. Start getting her <laughs> brand out so we can make this 15K back. Have you seen other things help your brand from the music? So I know I've seen you do um, national anthems. Like I've, see, I've seen you Zach. doing more. That was Zach. Good job, Zach. <laughs> Everything is Right? Zach. Like different like uh, country artists, red carpets and stuff. So are you feeling the benefits of your brand in other ways from the money you've deployed to make music? Um, well, it hasn't just been even like, yes, I did that. But 
Then I bought three more songs. Then I made music videos. I had all these trips to Arizona because that's when everything was done. Then I paid for advertising for all of these songs. And so it was, it was all in more than 50 K way more. Wow. Yeah. So that is terrifying, honestly, as a single parent, because it makes me feel very guilty Mm because I'm like, Ooh, like that was also money for my kids, you know, but there's also a part of me that's like so fucking proud of myself because this is what I've always wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And you get one chance to like, do it right. Yeah. And so that's where my money was. You get one chance to do it right. Yeah. Go all. Yeah. Go all in. And you think about what is a lot of times we talk dollars and cents on this podcast, but there are things that are so much greater than dollars and cents. So let's say it's 75K all or let's just call it 100 k all in. What is the value of your kids knowing that their mom at all costs like lived their her dream oh, yeah. and went for it? They it's think much, I'm Taylor Swift. Yeah. It's they think m- that, that people came to the baseball game to see me sing, not to watch the baseball game. <laughs> but like and so but that instills life lessons in them that like yes. even if it's gonna cost yeah. hundred grand, you could afford it. Go for it, make it happen, yeah. do what you gotta do with it. Yeah. And then I also think, you know, i I want to be I've always been a singer. So having me now not be bachelor person, be singer, yeah. that's who I am. Yeah. That is who I am. I'm not influencer bachelor woman. Yeah. You know, this is what I do. This is what I'm good at. So I like looking at my Instagram page and yes, seeing my kids, but also seeing the music because I'm like, that's that's Carly. Yeah. You know, that other person that's like been there the last couple of years, that wasn't. My, the best version of myself. Yeah. It was your journey. And part right, of your journey right. you've you've made people have followed you now for, you know, six, seven years and they've seen yeah. all the ups and downs. So it's just a part of your chapter. But like totally. now it feels like and that's why I was so excited to have you on. You turn the chapter in a new way, uh professionally, but also that's enlightened you in every other way. I mean, do, yes. you, do you feel that? Oh, thousand percent. Right. And that's yeah. why the, the pillars of like professional, uh personal and financial I'm a firm believer they're not siloed. Like they oh, all yeah. happen as one. I think I came back to myself with music and even opened myself up to just being a better mom. Like, yeah. you know, the dating world, like there's so much that has come just from me, I think just finding myself again. And I think music was like the catalyst to that. Okay. So for everyone that's listening that loves your music, they follow you, what can they expect career wise? What's the direction you're going next with music? I mean, I, I'm going to continue to be putting out music. I'm doing some collaborations that are fun. Um, but I think just watching me do it, I'm just going to keep going. Keep, keep. Yeah. Keep going because like who's, you know, Lady Gaga did it. Yeah. Stephanie, (laughs) that bitch, that bitch singing at lunch. (laughs) If she could do it, she can do it. it. You know? All right. And yeah, I, I honestly, there's like a lot of people out there that are like, this is, not probably not a very nice thing to say, but there's a lot of people in the music industry that aren't even like good singers. And I'm like, if they can do it, yeah. like I can definitely do it. It feels to me that doesn't, I don't know anything about music, but what I do know is it feels like a lot of it's a marketing play. Yeah. Like there are certain people sure. back to the Broadway vibe, like the people, the talent's there. Yes. It's just, how are you branding yourself yeah. to be captivating, yeah. to be special? Yeah. All right. Piece of advice for someone right now that's stuck. They haven't pursued their dream. They want to pursue their dream. They've always had their eyes on it. As a kid, they had those books of what they wanted to do. And now they're yeah, down yeah, the yeah. lane that they're not. What would you tell them to do? It's like the first step. Oh my gosh. I, it's really just like baby steps. Like do one thing and honestly like music it was it was scary i was like oh that's a scary place to step back into but i think if it scares you then you kind of like know it's the right thing to do for yourself i like that like you got to kind of step into your fear and just like put your toe in the water okay like whatever that. that is and even like i'm i know i keep saying this and i shouldn't be saying i'm old but like i'm old like People in the music You're industry coming old. out, but they're like 21. You know what I mean? I'm turning 38 next month. Yeah, so it's think, a weird time. I have kids. Like this yeah. is not the ideal time to put music out. Yeah. But I think the ideal time for me is now. The well, ideal time for you. That's what I got. But also like, because I like telling people like, you can do it whenever. Yeah. that's. I think that's a great takeaway to have because 
you feel as though these 21 year olds have something that you don't have because they do. They are 21. They have an experience that's different, but also the same goes for them. You have an experience that they don't have. You've been married. You've been on reality TV. You have kids. You are single parenting. Like there's so much in your journey that you can share that oh, yeah. they can't share. Totally. And so I think knowing that like age or number doesn't define you, it's your experiences and how you share them defines yeah. you. And I think that's that's the big message, I yeah. think, right? Yeah, totally. All right. Well, music is exciting. You talked about dipping your toes in. If you're scared, do it, but do it scared. One of the last questions I got to ask you is reality TV. You did it three times. <laughs> scared. Are we yeah, going to see true. you on the beaches? Are we going to see you no. in another show? Do you have an interest in going reality TV? No. Never. So Carly will never be on reality TV again from a career perspective. I mean, God, if it was like the voice or something, yeah. maybe, oh, but like not, not in a dating something world. No. Okay. No. Yeah. yeah. No. There you go. Get ready for music. Not reality TV from Carly. <laughs> the brand has shifted and the brand is moving. The last question I got for you before I get your trading secret is the whole influencing world. We talked yes. a little bit about when you got off the show. We talked about when you got engaged, when you got married. We haven't talked about after the breakup, oh, yeah. being single. Have you seen a dip in yes. like career earnings? Why? What's your take sure. on it? How have you navigated it? Um, I wouldn't say I've navigated it well. I think since, so I've officially been divorced like a year and a half. Um, and, you know, I had the million followers and then it went down and down and down and down. Yeah after that. And I was going to let that bother me, but I decided to not let that bother me. Um, because I don't need those people, Yeah, you know? Yeah. Uh, but also I, you know, social media is so much about like, you have to like keep posting, keep doing it. Like, and this year I've really, like I said, I was doing the music thing. I haven't been very present on social media like I used to. And I know that social media is a job mm -hmm. and I haven't been very good at my job. And so I've made way less than I have in years, but I also know that that was my own choosing to like have a break for myself. Yeah. I like like I choose when I go on and do it, not, it doesn't choose me. I love that. And when you're, I think when you've been good with money, mm -hmm. you have that freedom to do so. Yes. Okay. Yes. But I will say, in the past couple of months, I've been like, okay, maybe I should like, we, we got to get back, back rolling in the game yeah. of the social media. Yeah. But I do feel like the break was necessary and needed. I love it. And sometimes the break gives you that creative ingenuity to come back even stronger. Totally. Yeah. I have my breakup album. This is what I'm calling my breakup album. I never, <laughs> ever listened to the Eagles before. The Eagles are so For great. For some reason, during this breakup, I can't. I'm Every day, I've been listening to the Eagles. And the one you would say. This is like my year of the Eagles, too. Is I'm it really? so in love I'm with the Eagles I'm telling you there's year. something about but there's a line. And uh, taking it's taking it to the limit. And it is um, spend all your time making money or spend your love making time. Yes. And so when you said the idea about like, I can spend all my time driving the content, putting it out, worrying about what people think, and yes, the money comes in, or you can just spend your love where you want to make your time yes. and then it will all come together. Yeah. So that's my take on that. Career advice, personal life, breakup advice, take it home. Carly, we got to get a trading secret from you. One trading secret that people couldn't read in a newspaper, they couldn't watch in a YouTube tutorial or TikTok tutorial. They can't learn from a professor. They can only learn from you based on all your career experiences. So it could be a money tip. It could be a life tip. It could be a financial tip, career oh tip, gosh. anything. It's got to oh be goodness. one trading secret if you need to think about it we could edit this i mean out. truly like i don't have any financial tips <laughs> but career tip i would just say do what you love you get one life you know if you're and i you know i say this because i have been financially blessed in the last few years but um you could you know go to work and do a nine to five every day and just like hate your life mm -hmm. Or maybe you take a pay cut and you go for the job that you love and your life feels so much fuller. Mm -hmm. So yes, money needs to be there. But I do think that at least try to, even if it's not your job, try to find something that you love to make yourself happy. I love that. And I think a training secret I'm going to take away from this is you can make so many excuses in life and so many curveballs can come your way. 
But if you want it bad enough, you'll find the time. Even yeah. if you've gone through a divorce, even if you're a single mother with kids, even mm-hmm. if you feel like you lost your dream of what once was, if you want it bad enough, the excuses stop and the action happens. Yeah. And you can do it, even if you're pressed against the wall. So that is going to be my trading secret from you, Carly. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on Trading Secrets. Let's first start with this. People want to listen to your music. If they haven't heard it, where do they go? Oh, gosh. Anywhere music is streaming. I mean, okay. Apple Music, Spotify, like anywhere. You can also go to carlowaddell.com and it'll all be there. Do you make more money if people buy it on iTunes versus stream it? I like have no idea. Okay. <laughs> These are things, Zach, you got to figure this shit out. He's Let your girl know. At me. But either no way, idea. maybe, you know, maybe you do. Let's just pretend <laughs> so you do. Bad, don't, I don't buy know. Carly's music. See, this right is now. why I'm like not a good financial yeah, person. I'm like, I just love putting. Song. All right, we're gonna have to get you talking to our agency, Carly. All right, so buy the song on iTunes, stream it on Apple or Spotify, right? Mm-hmm. Watch your music videos. Are they on uh, YouTube? Yes. Okay, and then where can everyone find all your social handles? Um, I mean, everything is Carly Wad, C R R L Y W A D. There you go. We heard no? that story and why that's God, the uh, so that's the Instagram handle. The last thing I leave with. Do you have, can we expect when your next song will be out? Is there a date would, we should be paying close attention? I think attention? probably like the new year. The new maybe, year. Okay. Maybe. maybe before then. Who knows? I might surprise you. Okay. Get buckled up. Check out My Kind of Woman, <laughs> Your Friends Like Me. Those are my two that I <laughs> listened to twice. Really enjoyed I those. I love you. Love My Kind and, of Woman. And uh, Carly, thank you for being on Training Secrets. Yeah, thanks.